15 minutes feels very, very hard, but we'll do our, do our, do our very best. Um, I'm going to start. Um, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about, firstly, the question, a very, very important question, why manufacturing matters. So why we still need to talk about manufacturing and the specific role that manufacturing plays. Um, and the, um, we're going to talk about the specific evolution of manufacturing in South Africa around the minerals energy complex and what that's meant for the pattern of, a specific pattern of manufacturing and the implications for employment because of the domination of a narrow group of capital intensive sectors. So that's the sort of framing. Um, we're then going to look at why, why the Hauteng city region and we're going to present our preliminary findings about how these sectors have evolved, particularly around, around employment, but not only about employment. Um, we're, it's work in progress, which we're doing for GCRO here at, here at WITS. Um, but we do, we do have some conclusions, we think, already uh, on the question of, 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 of linkages and employment, which are worth, are worth sharing. So, firstly, just there's a, there's a very big theoretical question here, and there's a big theoretical debate about why manufacturing matters, which goes down to the question of, is growth sector neutral, or is growth sector specific? And obviously, the mainstream approach is, as I'm sure a learned audience, like we get at TIPS, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll emphasise how growth is sector neutral, whereas classical and structuralist perspectives have a history of arguing that actually growth is sector specific, and that a change in sectoral structure affects economic growth. Um, we don't have time to go into it, but obviously there's a lot of body of li literature in classical development economics. Why, why does manufacturing matter? What do, what do, what are the arguments? What do they, what do they revolve around? Well, manufacturing has greater scope for learning by doing, for increasing returns to scale, for cumulative productivity increases, for strong growth pulling linkages with the rest of the domestic economy, and for tendencies to technological progress, in, in, to boil it down. And that manufacturing may act as an engine of growth through both output and employment channels. And that you can see the growth pulling effects of manufacturing through backward and forward linkages with the rest of the domestic economy. Um, and you can see demand multiplier effects through wages paid. Um, though obviously that's only true if wages are higher in, in, in manufacturing than in other sectors. And there's a whole body of literature summarised there in one slide, but we can obviously, obviously come, back, come back to it. Clearly, very closely tied to the question of why manufacturing matters is the question of whether deindustrialization matters. And Fiona Trigena, her colleague of mine at UJ, has done very, very good, 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 work, good work on this. But what you clearly see is advanced economies undergoing deindustrialization since the 1970s. But also, with, with the exception of East Asia, many developing economies be beginning to deindustrialize at relatively low levels of industrial development which is really very, quite, a significant, uh, qu quite a significant thing. And that, you know, what you see in conditions of what you might call premature deindustrialization, but premature in inverted commas, um, is that, you know, can, can services, which are very likely to be relatively low-skilled, low-productivity, non-tradable activities, you know, in retail and personal services, you know, do, do, they, do these really have the capacity to serve as dynamic replacements, which I think is very, very questionable. So, what, 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 what does all that, this mean in the context of South Africa, which has got a very specific, specific history? And I think if you look on the... It's a very long room, and I'm sure at the back your eyes are struggling already. Um, but if we look on the left, the left, the, the left third, the MEC sectors, this is, this is capital stock, MEC sectors at the core of the South African economy, mining, energy, uh, rubber, petroleum, chemicals, you know, the historic core of the South African economy, clearly rooted in mining and Engli English capital, but then Africana speaking capital through state-owned enterprises in steel, uh, in, in uh, ESCOM in electricity, and in SASOL in uh, liquid fuels. So on. these are the core, core sectors of, of, of the economy historically. The, the, the right third, that's government services, finance, uh, re retail, and, 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 and so forth. The, the middle third is really what, what, what I want you to look at, is non-MEC manufacturing. 
Actually, and, and we're going to show, these, these are actually the key to jobs generation. But if you look at capital stock in these sectors, you know, it's, it's actually, it's, it's negative in many, many, many important sectors. This is leather, uh, wool, paper, printing, and, 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 and so forth. Here, if you look, uh, this is work we did for Hauteng in 2007. If you look at what, in terms of uh, employment multipliers and backward linkages, if you look at what fall in the, the, the top right quadrant, we see wood, paper, print, food, all those sectors where there isn't the capital stock are actually the jobs generators. That's what that, what, what that shows. Um, similarly, if you look at the question of linkages, this shows the very, very close linkages Within the set in, between the sectors in the MEC core and their relative lack of linkages with, 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 with the rest of manufacturing, particularly if you look at the bottom. You look at the bottom, the bottom line, share of inputs from MEC, share of output to MEC for non-manufacturing non sectors. So that shows you've got a, a, an MEC core which has tight linkages between it, between, within and between it, and, and, and relatively weak linkages with the rest of manufacturing. That's the historic path of accumulation in, in, in South Africa. Uh, the, the term is obviously Ben Fine and Zav Rustumjis, uh, Zav who's sitting at the, at the back. So if you look, again, um, this is just GVA across manufacturing South Africa as a whole. Look, clearly, petroleum products, chemicals, rubber and plastic, metals, metal products, machinery and equipment. You know, way, way, still, still way out in the, in the lead, as it were. Uh, and then again, if you look at GVA by province, this is for 2011, Hauteng, the, the still the historic centre, really, of the, of, 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 of the, of the economy. So I'm going to hand over to Susan in a sec, but as I said, we're doing this work for GCRO, or Hauteng City, City Region, and they have, um, they have quite a good concept. They call it Hauteng City Region because it's bigger than actually just the borders of Hauteng. So, you know, it spreads to further to the east to include some of the, the coal belt. It spreads further to the south to include Sassol, further to the northwest to Rustenburg mining, platinum, and, and, and so forth. This, this is an area encapsulates the historic heartland of the MEC. So, the, what we've been looking at, and what Susan's going to now take you through, is what's the picture of how, how it's evolved. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything about the map. Thanks, Sam. Um, okay, I'm just going to take us through some of the sort of broad data in the Kaoteng uh, city region first. And the first thing, this is the subsector share of manufacturing GBA in the city region 2011. And just to show, not surprisingly, given the centrality of Kaoteng in, uh, uh, in manufacturing in the con country, is that this pattern is basically the same pattern that Sam showed earlier in the pie chart. So if we look at GVA, more than 50% of GVA in the city region in manufacturing is made up of pe petroleum products, chemical, chemicals, rubber and plastic, metals, metal products, machine and equipment. If we, and so these two sort of very central MEC manufacturing subsectors. Um, there are two other, if we add in the two next largest sectors by GVA in manufacturing in the, in the city region, we've got food, beverages, and tobacco, and transport equipment. So together, these four sectors make up just short of three quarters of all GVA in manufacturing in the city region. This is just to show this extremely skewed uh, ma pattern of manufacturing um, that is a legacy and the remnants of, of the particular nature of industrial development in South Africa. Um, uh, that Zav, uh, Rustamji and Ben Fine refer to as the mineral energy complex. If we look at fixed capital stock, this is again just zooming in a bit on that uh, slightly harder to see pie chart, um, uh, the slightly harder to see bar chart earlier. If we look at this in the region, petroleum products make up over 55% of all capital stock and then that together with metals and metal products is almost three quarters. So this just says something about the capital intensity and the sort of skewed capital bias of industry in, the, in South Africa and Gauteng in particular. Um, the reason we want to bring our attention to this is because we are interested in employment generation and how the industrial structure of the economy determines and conditions the nature of employment. So here is employment again. So much, a slightly different picture. Okay, we see that those two large sectors, again, make up most of employment in manufacturing, 
but metals here overtakes petroleum products because of the difference in capital intensity. But we see some other sectors coming in now as really important uh, employment generators in manufacturing, food, beverages and tobacco, furniture and other manufacturing and transport equipment. And I want to sort of draw your attention back to that scatter plot that Sam showed, where she so showed in the top right quadrant was, were the sectors that we identified back in our work in 2010 as sectors with very strong backward linkages and strong employment multipliers. So potential sectors for growth pulling effects and employment generation. So the first thing to note is that these three sectors here are um, food, beverages, furniture, manufacturing, transport equipment, were, are in that top right-hand quadrant. And I'll come back to that in a moment uh, when we discuss you know, what's been happening in terms of these sectors, in terms of investment and employment over the last, uh, since 1995. Um, the first thing to say that is actually investment has been very closely tied to the success of these uh, sectors, both in terms of GVA and employment generation. And this is... Uh, oh, someone's left their specs up here and I've just... Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and this is not a pretty picture, sadly. It's not the most positive of pictures. If we look from 1995 to 2013, you know, the first five to ten years... Uh, since 94, there's been a decline in fixed investment in manufacturing in Gauteng. It, it uh, recovered a bit um, in 2000s, only to plummet again with the financial crisis, and it's been creeping up. Now, this picture, this aggregate picture, masks enormous diversity around the sector, uh, across the industrial subsectors. So this graph is not very clear, I'm afraid, um, given how far away everyone is. But um, I just want to... There is a... Let me see if I can use this. Um, just wanted to show you, so if we remember the last graph, and these are the four largest manufacturing subsectors in Gauteng, uh, according to GVA, we see that uh, sectors like food and beverage and tobacco follow largely the patterns we saw in aggregate, and similarly with transport equipment, and we get the same across a number of other subsectors. But what's very different, what really bucks the trend, is petroleum products. We see this enormous increase here, uh, probably related to Sasol. But what's really sad is that sector which has the largest, which ha has the largest employment in manufacturing in, this, in the uh, province has really suffered in terms of productive investment. Okay, so one of our f sort of preliminary conclusions is if we're interested in manufacturing, we're interested in employment, this is a space where we really need to start to to uh, increase investment and capacity building in metals, metal products, machinery, equipment. So that's investment. And what we found in some of our, in our data analysis is that there's a pretty close relationship between, close correlation between investment and employment generation. Um, again, here we show employment generation and manufacturing across the city region. And uh, there was a bit of a decline in, uh, from 1995 to sort of 2003. Part of that might be due to uh, firm restructuring and outsourcing of things like cleaning, but that recovers slightly only to fall again since the crisis, and it has not recovered since. Um, this is just to bring out some of that data. So I'm looking at the changes in employment here across manufacturing subsectors. And what we've highlighted in red here, uh, so first of all, uh, overall decrease since 1995 has been 13% of employment in manufacturing in the Kaoteng city region. And if we look at the sectors that have suffered the most, these are again those sectors in that top right quadrant of having strong backward linkages and, and strong employment multipliers and have been largely neglected um, by policy. So we really, so things like food, uh, textiles, clothing, leather, traditionally a very strong employment generator has declined in terms of employment numbers by 31% in this, uh, in these two, in this uh, decade, uh, two decades or so. Um, another dimension of this has been, if we look again at the, there's been a bit of a skills bias in terms of this, uh, in this uh, decrease in employment across manufacturing subsectors. So this first column is fixed capital stock. The second column is total manufacturing across subsectors. The changes we, I showed you in the last graph, but then we separate them across skills level, highly skilled, skilled, and semi-skilled. And, what we, and the, red, the red numbers are all those where uh, employment numbers are registered to decline. And we see again 
uh, well, we see also that the job losses are concentrated in skilled, semi and unskilled, with highly skilled jobs relatively safe or actually even registering an increase in numbers. Um, this challenges uh, one of the really strong arguments in South Africa that the problem of unemployment lies in labour markets themselves, the supply and demand within the labour markets and a shortage of supply of skills. And we'd just like to challenge that a little bit to show that actually there's a structural basis for this employment that's not about the lacking of skills in the labour market itself, but the lack of demand from industry for, for these skilled and semi-skilled work. Okay, so just a couple of conclusions, and I think Sam has discussed already why manufacturing matters on a theoretical level, both as the engine of growth through uh, growth pull effects and linkages, as well as employment multipliers. And, um, and, and also we want to show that the MEC continues to matter. It continues to shape the way in which the sort of biased nature of manufacturing the South African economy. Um, and it conditions the nature and scope of linkage development and employment. And what we've seen is, you know, with, uh, since 1995, it's those uh, manufacturing subsectors not linked to the MEC that have seen massive decline. Um, and we have uh, two sort of more poli policy-related conclusions as well. And the first is if, if policy, you know, in terms of employment generation, um, our position is that employment policy or uh, employment generation needs to be closely tied to industrial policy and to understand uh, and, and cannot sort of look only at the labour market as disconnected from the industrial structure of the South African economy. And this is, we've got structure here with a big S, so this is not just competition or market concentration, this is structure as in the vertical linkages and the horizontal diversity, vertical and horizontal linkages um, of manufacturing itself. And uh, so, our position is that industrial policy needs to focus critically on these linkages in order to develop a broad, independent and diversified industrial structure and only this can uh, lead to a significant dent in the employment problem. Thank you.